Stay back. And go. Good. Did it stay in contact the entire time? Why are you always following me? You stop following me. <laughs> in the process of writing this tease, I googled finding purpose in life, because that's the gist of this feature. Some of the things that came up were three unexpected ways to find your life's purpose, seven strange questions that can help you find your purpose in life, and my personal favorite, how to discover your life's purpose in 20 minutes. Now this piece probably won't help you discover your reason for existence, but it will make one thing very clear. More often than not, finding your purpose is no easy task. This is a complex story about personal transformation, self-discovery, and how one man's journey to find a sense of belonging would in essence give him purpose. This is the story of Nunu Costa. How would you describe Nunu to someone who hasn't met him? How to describe Nunu? Um... Oh man. Jeez, that is a hard question. Yeah, the first time I met him, I think was early 2007. He came into a gym that we were doing a free Saturday workout at before Invictus existed. And uh, he came in, he was skinny. He was a really skinny triathlete. The first couple of things I heard people say about Nunu was how he was an amazing runner. Nunu is Nunu, like he's energetic, funny. Nunu has a great balance of energetic, super energetic, but also really genuine. He's the old guy at the gym. I think he's around 36 years old, so we always make fun of him. He's about 10 years older than I am, but and about 10 years older than a lot of the people that we train with, and you would never know, because he, he definitely beats all of us on a regular basis. <laughs> What's up, Nathan? How are you? There you go. You're gonna go right down here and grab a t-shirt, okay? It's Tashina with an E, right? Yes. Okay, got it. Paul, I'm Nunu, nice to meet you. Pleasure. Here you go, Daniel. Thanks. Yeah. Here's your name tag. Put it where we can see it. It's a very complicated process here of making name tags. What's going on, Barry? How are you? How you doing, man? As part of the CrossFit training staff, Nunu holds one of the most coveted jobs in the world of fitness. He's a member of the Level 1 seminar staff. Our job, I'm getting chills thinking about this, is to deliver like what Coach Glassman like created. You know, and what he created has made an enormous impact on a, on a global level. You know, we have over 12,000 affiliates. So to me, there's a sense of responsibility to uphold the name of CrossFit and also what Coach Glassman and what CrossFit stands for. That's a lot of responsibility. We can plot any health markers that we care to measure according to our sickness, wellness, fitness continuum. And what we want to do is we want to give you guys a general range in terms of the health markers that we care to measure. Some of these health markers include blood pressure, body fat, bone density, and so on. So true fitness runs much deeper than a 500 pound deadlift. And on this continuum, true fitness can be gauged by all the traditional measurements of health. This is when we start talking about what it is that you're doing outside the gym. Because yes, you might be committed to coming in three to four days a week, but you're going out drinking every night and you're getting three or four hours of sleep and you got a high stress job. This fourth model, what we're talking about, we're looking for a balance of your fitness regimen and lifestyle factors. A balance that until recently was absent from Nunu's life. My drug of choice was cocaine, you know. Uh, I started smoking pot in college. I didn't really drink in high school at all. <clears throat> like maybe two or three times. My dad was an alcoholic, so growing up, I wanted to avoid alcohol. Even my first six months of college, I didn't do any drinking because I, I didn't want to become like my dad. So then I did a lot of controlled drinking in college. And then uh, my senior year, I started experimenting a little bit more with uh, substances. And then, uh, yeah, I kind of, my addiction sort of uh, took place more when I lived in New York. And uh, I lived there from 2002 to 2004. Now, according to the National Institute on Drug Abuse, drug addiction shares many features with other chronic illnesses, including a tendency to run in families, as well as an onset and course that is influenced by environmental conditions and behavior. So before we go any further, we need to go back a bit to better understand how Nunu got to this point. 
I was uh, born in Portugal, and uh, I lived there until I was 12. And I moved here in 1991, and I've been here since, here being the United States. More specifically, Carlsbad, California. Less than a year after being born, Nunu's mother was diagnosed with schizophrenia. His parents divorced when he was six. When Nunu's father remarried an American and brought his sons to the States, life wouldn't get much easier. Life in Portugal and life in Carlsbad, California is like night and day. You know, like even initially when we moved here, we were sleeping on couches, like literally, like my brother slept here and I slept there. In a way, it's like, you know, I wanted to spend as little time as home as possible, you know, and uh, I, I didn't get along very well with my stepmom back then, and my dad was uh, an alcoholic growing up, and uh, he worked actually mostly evenings, so he wasn't home, so there was really not much for me to go home to, so the more time I spent at school, you know, the less time I'd have to go, you know, to spend at home. I didn't speak any English when I moved here, so the thing that helped me sort of feel connected, adapted, and accepted was uh, getting involved in sports. You know, it gave me the sense of like being a part of, you know, I didn't feel like there was a disconnect and also helped me like kind of get connected to a lot of different groups in school. And then, uh, you know, went to junior high and high school in Carlsbad before uh, moving away for college. After graduating from Cal Poly with a degree in international business, Nunu would move to the Big Apple. In his two and a half years in New York, Nunu's addiction would take on a new role. Alcohol and drugs, primarily like cocaine, became a coping mechanism for me. You know, my mom passed away. My partner at the time, uh, our relationship wasn't going well. My grandpa died. And so it was like back to back to back things. I had just moved to New York, like literally like less than six months after graduating college. And I have just no life skills, you know? I didn't have many tools in terms of how to deal with life on life's terms. Nunu's downward spiral would continue when he returned to California in 2004. In 2005, my life fell apart, you know, like uh, it just felt like the carpet got pulled out from under me. And uh, I didn't know, you know, at the time, like I didn't know right from wrong. I got arrested, you know, like I had a nervous breakdown, seriously. And uh, and uh, yeah, I ended up walking into somebody's home, you know, thinking that's what, like, you know, God was providing for me. And I was actually on a mission to save the world. <laughs> I was out there once I got arrested and I, you know, got charged with a, you know, uh, with a felony. And then that kind of opened up my eyes. And then shortly thereafter, I ended up going into treatment. Treatment would give Nunu a glimpse of who he wanted to be as he continued to battle his addiction. When I didn't have drugs and alcohol, all of a sudden, I was more on the path of where I knew I could be and should be and wanted to be. So if Nunu had an idea of where he wanted to be, why couldn't he make the necessary changes on his own? Because cocaine's a hell of a drug, that's why. Recently, Greg Glassman spoke at the Harvard Divinity School, and one thing he talked about was eradicating chronic diseases. The problem is, is that it requires a, some lifestyle changes that people won't make um, in solo. They won't, they're unlikely to sitting by themselves. Now, Coach was mainly talking about diabetes, heart disease, and so on. But one characteristic that drug addiction shares with these chronic illnesses is the ability to respond to appropriate treatment, which may include long-term lifestyle modification. Nunu had an idea of how he wanted to live his life, but he was missing the key component that would help him make those long-term changes. I have a picture of my grandpa. A lot of people think that this is my dad, and it's actually my grandpa on my mom's side of the family. I put together a little uh, shadow box of when we won the games last year. So this is pretty cool. I took one of the jerseys, I took our medal. I made these for each of our teammates. It says, I am a master of my fate, I am a captain of my soul. So it's based on the Invictus poem, what Invictus was named after, full effort is full victory. So I made one of these exactly like this for each of our teammates and I gave it to them before the games. Just to remind us like what our purpose there is. In 2014, they had one purpose win the Affiliate Cup at the CrossFit Games. Oh man, it was unreal. I don't even know how to explain it. You know, it was, uh, everything came together. We executed and we minimized the amount of mistakes that we had. 
you know, that was the bottom line. If you had asked those guys beforehand, I don't think any of them thought we were going to do anywhere as well as we had in previous years. We had so many ups and downs during that season, and Nunu's kind of always been, I know that I can always count on him. He's so consistent, he's always there, and he's just, he's a strong person. And so I don't know what I would ever do without him on a team with me, because um, he's kind of my, my go-to. He's kind of the anchor that holds everybody together. You got it, Heather! A lot of that comes from experience, because Nunu is no amateur when it comes to CrossFit competition. I think Nunu is like the Cal Ripken of the Affiliate Cup, you know what I mean? It's like, you're not having the Affiliate Cup without Nunu there, so. This kid's been to the CrossFit Games seven consecutive years, you know? And, uh, but because he's been on a team, nobody, Maybe people don't know his name, but you could put him up against some of the best athletes in the world and he's gonna hold his own. Come on, get up, get up! Oh boy! I mean, I, I think I could say this without making anybody else angry, but he is my favorite athlete that I've ever coached in terms of he has never hit a plateau, really, right? So he hasn't, you know, skyrocketed this, the same way others have but we're eight years in now, and he's just consistently gotten better every single year. He's gotten stronger every single year. He's maintained his speed that he had in college on the track. Um, I mean, it's absolutely incredible, but it, it all comes down to his character and his consistency. He just is even keel. He's constant and he's consistent, and I think that's why he just continues to improve. CrossFit Invictus. It was, it was awesome. Kind of thinking back to that, like I just can't help but smile. That was a really, really great accomplishment for all of us. You know, it was a little surreal. Like you walk away and it's like, oh, we just won the CrossFit Games. And then even throughout the year, I would remind our teammates like, hey, remember that time when we won the CrossFit Games? And uh, yeah, that was in 2014. I'll always remember that. Being on the podium, I was just kind of ecstatic, you know, until Rasmus poured the champagne on me. <laughs> when you're clean and sober, the last thing you want is someone pouring champagne on your head, regardless of the situation. Yeah, that's right. At this point in Nunu's life, he was clean and sober. So I got sober in December uh, 31st, 2007. And about nine months after that, I found CrossFit. Less than that, it was like seven, six or seven months. So I found CrossFit in 2008, in the summer of 2008. Nunu was working for a company that managed online registration for sporting events. He convinced the powers that be to send him to check out a small competition that at the time was in its infancy, the CrossFit Games. Oh man, I couldn't have imagined being where it is now back then. All I knew, it just it resonated with me. It, it hit me in the core of my being in, in the sense that like these people are really fit and I don't feel like I'm really fit. Even though at the end of July, I had just done a half Ironman. Something about it made sense to the point where it was like everything that I'd done up until that point didn't make sense. What would eventually make sense was meeting the people who would give Nunu the opportunity to find the sense of community that was missing from his life. I basically got connected to all the people. I met Coach, I met, you know, uh, Dave Castro. And then shortly after the 2008 games, um, you know, Dave Castro reached out to me and said, hey, if you're interested in doing your level one, just let me know. And so that kind of opened the door. And as soon as I got back to San Diego, I looked on the main site and saw that there was a level one in August, like the following month. And I went and got my level one that following month. And then I started coaching. Shortly thereafter, like literally August or September, I started teaching fundamentals. 1922. All right, go to your barbell, guys. After competing for the first time at the 2009 CrossFit Games, Nunu was looking for an affiliate that could help make him a better coach and athlete. And he would find it at CrossFit Invictus. I contacted CJ and said, hey, you know, I'm interested in coming down. And he was kind of reluctant, very reluctant at first. He, I think I was probably one of the first people he brought on from outside of uh, his community. We said, well, you know, we'd love to have somebody work with athletes on the track. And so he started out working with us and with our endurance program. He started our endurance program at Invictus. At the time, I knew that Invictus was um, a place where people were doing this as a profession. A profession that brought a tremendous amount of balance to Nunu's life 
and it would show as he began to develop his unique coaching style. Heels back and then up. Good one. Nunez's coaching style is very high energy um, and demanding in a sense, right? He's got a very soft touch with people that um, need encouragement and he finds a way to give encouragement, but he will make everybody push to their, you know, limits. He doesn't take shit from anybody. <laughs> he wants everybody to be on time. He follows the rules and he makes sure that everybody else follows the rules. So instead of going like this, I want you to catch it here, okay? So he holds people accountable. I think that's the, that's the greatest thing that he does as a coach. He inspires with his own behavior and action, but he holds people accountable to their goals. All the way up, all the way up, Michael. There you go, better. Come on. Go, go, go. Don't let Hassan run, be on the run. I think I know what I want to use. I think I want to use like maybe the example when I went to the games in 2008, just to do like mar marker research. And before then, like my perception of what fitness and health was, was completely changed just by, you know, what I was exposed to that, that weekend. Yeah. It just yeah. completely opened my mind in terms of, and I haven't found a better way to, you know, you know, improve someone's health and fitness than what we've been doing. Exactly. Last year I became a U.S. citizen, so that was pretty important. And uh, actually one of our members came to the ceremony and ended up getting this folder for me. This is uh, the little box of medals <laughs> that I've accumulated over the years. Got everything from Ragnar Relay medals to sobriety tokens, half marathons, half Ironman, uh, you name it. There's probably more medals here. Gay Games, uh, this is from Cologne from 2010. And then these ones are the most recent ones. And I was thinking about doing a display. These are from Cleveland from last year's gay games, and they're only every four years, so these are nice. I've displayed them, and that's different for me. I don't usually like put things, things on display. Originally, this piece was just supposed to focus on Nunu competing at the 2014 gay games in Cleveland. Uh, last name is Costa, C-O-S-T-A. Uh, 35 to 39. Right so I'm in the second heat in lane five. Uh, if you find okay. yourself, yes sir. Great, thank and you. You're here. Let me just circle you yep. in. I would fly to Cleveland, knowing very little about the event I was covering, or the man I was following. So this is what I'm gonna be racing in today. My Invictus athlete singlet, super tight, super small, <laughs> with my name on the back. I'm about to go put it on, getting ready for racing. But in the few days I spent with Nunu, I quickly realized that this story was much bigger than a CrossFit Games athlete competing at the gay games. And I think I first found out like that I like boys. <laughs> when I was like young, like 10 or nine, you know? But then like, I think like, you don't know until like later, you can't really, you don't, you can't make sense of it, or I didn't at least. And uh, in high school towards the later years of when I started to realize it. And uh, in college is when I started coming out. And it, w it was probably towards the latter part, like my fourth year that I became more comfortable with my sexuality and knowing that I was gay. While in college, Nunu wrote a seven-page letter explaining to his parents that he was gay. I think they weren't surprised, you know, they weren't shocked by it. I think they kind of knew, you know. I think even now, like my dad accepts me completely and, uh, and so does my stepmom. But at the same time, there's always kind of like, I don't know if there's they're really that full acceptance. You know, like whenever I've had a boyfriend in the past, it's like, oh, when is your, is your friend coming over with you? It's like, it's not my friend, it's my boyfriend. And uh, it's not something that I've ever like talked very openly with my dad. We've talked about it. But, you know, he tells me, it's like, my love for you is the same regardless. You know, I just want you to be happy. While being openly gay has become much more widely accepted, modern sports culture is still incredibly intolerant of homosexuality. I won't go into the psychology and cultural biases that are behind this train of thought, but the LGBT community has long been ostracized in the sporting world. And that's why the gay games exist. It's, a, it's, about, it's about creating space where anybody can compete. So it's not that we're exclusive to 
uh, only gay people. It's actually inclusive to anybody who'd like, who wants to participate. And it's giving us an opportunity to continue to compete, whereas we may not have an opportunity to do so uh, in, in whatever our sport is. Nunu's sport is CrossFit, but he was a sprinter in his college days at Cal Poly. And while he doesn't train for sprinting anymore, CrossFit seems to be enough to give him a leg up on the competition. We have a private Facebook group for the CrossFit Invictus members. So this was my post, I just posted this. I'm still the fastest gay in the world. I won the 100 meter today at the Gay Games in Cleveland in a time of 11.52, video to follow. I, I've always received a, a ton of praise from them and support. You know, that's the thing, like Invictus is like my second family, if not my first family. Just I've gotten so close to the people there. You know, uh, I could say that TJ's parents have adopted me and kind of taken me under their wing and like been like role models in terms of like parents and whatnot. <clears throat> and everybody within the community, I've gotten nothing but love and support from them. Get together. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Good work, guys. I'm like, this doesn't look like the gold I got at the CrossFit Games, but I'll take it. It's a different kind of gold. It just reminded me that anything's possible. Four more years of bragging. You know, and that's, uh, that's what I try to instill in the people that I train when I coach, is that, like, allow them to not just have any limits in terms of what they can accomplish. All right, let's hold the metal up. Oh, yeah, here we go. Hold it with your... Uh, <laughs> hold it on the other side? Yep. Yeah, like right, right up around your head, because that's the way I got... If you can pull it up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Oh, that's a great shot. You know, this feeling of euphoria is like, you know, once I stop doing drugs, I don't, <laughs> I don't really have that feeling of euphoria, except from like sports competition. So it's like, you know, it's, it's something that I hold on to and I think about is like that moment of joy, just pure, like authentic joy. Ready and go. Yeah, that's better. Belly's tight. Nunu hasn't experienced much negativity within the CrossFit community pertaining to his sexual orientation, but it would be ignorant to claim it doesn't exist. For him, sharing his story with the world is just another vehicle to help others. Being gay is not something that is easy, especially when you're first coming out. Even though that I experienced that over 10 years ago, there's people now that are just coming out. And they may not be in their 20s, they may not be in their 30s, they could be in their 40s or 50s. Even in their 60s, I've heard people, you know, finally coming to terms with their sexuality. You know, so I, you know, I was actually having this conversation with somebody. It's like, you know, there's the possibility of negative criticism. But if I can be like an inspiration, a motivation, you know, to somebody who's kind of struggling, then I'm happy to be that. Good, all the way down, Matt, all the way down, a little lower. There, good, I want to see that chest hit the deck. CrossFit offers, you know, the community aspect. That's what makes it stand out from any other fitness program. It's not uncommon to hear of people completely changing their lives once they found CrossFit and stand Better, right? Okay, good. It's clear that CrossFit has forever changed Nunu's life, but it's the community aspect that provides him with everything he needs to maintain his sobriety. What I can tell you is that my sobriety depends on it uh, in the sense that I may not be able to get to as many meetings as possible, but I know that when I'm in CrossFit, I don't feel like I'm gonna be exposed to potentially triggers. If I tell somebody I'm clean and sober and this is my sobriety day, which is usually like what I'll tell them, there's respect there and there's not like, oh, how come, can you tell me a little bit? It's like, there's no gray area. It's like, I don't drink because I'm clean and sober since 2007. All of a sudden, it's like, oh, okay, great. And that's that. It's a different grip than you have for a front squat and a press, it's right in between. When I say go, you're gonna squat, hold the bottom of the squat so your coaches can coach. Ready, and squat. Now, CrossFit is not the answer to all life's problems. You can trust me on that. But for Nunu, it provided something that he'd spent his entire life searching for. What it's given me is given me a sense of who I am, you know, and in uh, the biggest, uh, the biggest eye opener is giving me a sense of belonging. You know, we talked about, you know, growing up playing sports. Uh, that gave me a sense of belonging, you know, so is CrossFit. You know, it's also given me a purpose. It's given me a purpose. I've always known that I wanted to help people. My mission in life is to help people redefine what's possible in their life. And what I'm able to do is connect with people and see what their potential is. Because a lot of times we have blockages or, you know, we're, you know, even in CrossFit, you see people that they don't think they can do a pull up or they don't think they can uh, lift or go a little bit further or do an extra round. So 
So, you know, my ability to connect and push people, you know, is kind of like all in one. So I got this email today and, uh, from somebody who dropped into our gym and it says, hey man, I'm finally home and settled, so I just wanted to say it was a pleasure to meet you. Thanks for making me feel welcome at your gym while I was traveling. It's incredible that I can travel the world, but through CrossFit I can meet so many friendly and down-to-earth people. What you have at your gym is unique and special and hopefully I'll be back sooner than later and a much better athlete after all the advice you gave me. Much appreciated and good luck with your year. That's pretty cool. Nuno's journey to this point in his life, the point where he would be in a position to help people, was long and arduous. And even at this moment, it's hard to expound on the complexities that make up Nunu's character. And while there are many ways you could describe Nunu, athlete, gay, addict, none of these words actually define him. And after everything he's been through, Nunu has finally found that place where he truly belongs. And that's what gives him purpose. That's what defines him. Boom, goes the dynamite.